Hey everybody, it's Angie with Gigi's Art Treasure. I wanted to pop on really quick and show you guys these artist trading cards that I'm going to be creating today for my swap partner on a artist's website that I belong to called Willowing. And if you don't know anything about artist trading cards, they are two and a half inches across by three and a half inches tall and you can round them you can paint them you can pretty much do anything that you want to do to them but I'm going to be using my crop corner rounder and I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to round all of my corners that was the small side so I didn't like that side and I like my I like my corners rounded. I just feel like they just look so much nicer and more like um, Project Life cards, if you will, when the corners are rounded. And I love that look. I love that look. So the next thing I want to do is I want to add some collage elements. So I'm just going to grab some scraps here out of my out of my scrap drawer and the reason that I want to add scraps is because I like a lot of layers so I have some ephemera here that I'm going to be adding but that's going to be the last few elements that are going to be going on the card I want the layers behind it and I may trim those down I'm not really sure yet how that's going to go so let me just grab my gel matte medium and I was using Mod Podge to decoupage all of my layers onto my cards, but I discovered, that's an old wet paintbrush. Um, I discovered <clears throat> when I do that, um, even though I was using this three-step gluing process, um, it was still coming up and after time though not right away just after time and i want my stuff to last especially since i'm going to be sending it to someone i don't want it falling apart on them but not only that um and maybe i just wasn't doing my decoupage technique correctly i'm not really sure it lasted like i can go back into some of my journals from several years ago and i can look and see when i used the gel matte medium those pages are perfectly fine they're still holding all together but on the pages where i used the mod podge or the combination of glue and water they were lifting so i don't want that to happen with my artist trading cards i want these guys to last a long time now what i do is i put some on the back but then i also go over the top pretty not super generously, but somewhat generously because I want it to kind of seal all the edges and make sure that all of that is going to stay down. And I'm just using some music paper here and I'm going to use some text pages as well. Um, but yeah, I like a lot of layers on my journal pages, on my artist trading cards, the whole nine yards. I like a lot of layers and I want it to look really, really cool. So hopefully my swap partner will love these and will get lots of enjoyment out of these for years to come. I just started this artist trading group a couple months ago. This is my second swap, I believe. And I want to actually create a little kind of like a photo album with all of my artist trading card swaps that I get from people. Um, I want to collect them. That's what they're for, is to collect. Um, and I love collecting artist trading cards from all over. So I thought it would be a really kind of cool thing. So I may do a video on that and um, show you guys how I'm going to do that. So let me know what you think. This here is some mulberry paper that I actually painted on, and I really enjoyed painting on this mulberry paper. It was so much fun. Um, I just sit in my studio sometimes, and I just doodle and just, I don't know, just play 
when I'm not really sure what I want to be doing. I just sit and play and sometimes by doing that, <clears throat> excuse me, it sparks creativity. And when you're feeling stuck and you really just don't know what to do, just grab something and play with it. And you'll discover by doing that, that ideas will come to you as you do them. Now, I'm not too precious about how I'm putting these layers on there. I'm not trying to create any kind of specific design. I just want to get the layers on and then we can start adding all the other little elements that we're going to do to it. And I think I will make this the last little piece. This is a tiny little piece. And then we can start painting these and getting our, I want to dry them first, but getting our little pieces of, pieces of ephemera on there. Artist trading cards are pretty doggone quick to make. They're small little pieces of art. Like I said, they're only two and a half by three and a half inches tall. I think we're gonna use Karen Dash water soluble pencils for giving this some colorful background. I'm just gonna think really quickly what I want my color scheme to be. So while I do that, I'm just gonna dry these really quickly. Okay, now that I have these dry, and that's another thing that I really like about the, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, that's another thing that I really like about the gel matte medium is that it takes a little less time to dry than it does with the Mod Podge or the combination of glue and water. So you can use whatever you would like. You do not have to use anything specific other than as long as you want, you know, as long as your paper is gonna stay, or as long as your background decoupage is gonna stay, you're good. So the color scheme for these are obviously, you can tell, is peaches and pinks and greens and a little bit darker green. So I think that's what I'm gonna go with, and there's a little bit of lilac in there. So I think that's what I'm gonna go with in my color scheme here. So I wanna start with lilac because that's the one color that really sticks out to me the most. I think this is called lilac. Actually, this is called Pervench. Periwinkle blue. I'm reading all the different names of the colors in different languages. Periwinkle blue. To me, it looks lilac, but maybe I'm colorblind. I don't know. I'm just kidding. I'm not colorblind. To me, it looks lilac. But see, here's lilac and periwinkle blue in here as well. So I just want to use that color and have that stand out a little bit in our background. And then I'm gonna use my water pen. Can you guys even see? You guys cannot even see. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Let me turn this camera around. I'm sorry, I did not even have you on frame. I had this Periwinkle Blue Neo Color 2 Karen Dash Water Soluble Crayon. And I just went around the edges of my card. And I'm going to add some other color elements to it as well. But I wanted to pick up these periwinkle blue colors. I feel so bad that you guys could not see me doing that. But you've probably seen me color with Karen Dash colors like 357 million times. So it's not like uh, that would be anything new to you. But that's what I did. And now I want to take my water pencil my water pen because obviously I can't talk today. Holy mackerel. And I just want to activate those Neo Color 2 crayon. And it really brings out that color when you do this. And it's just water in here. Nothing special. These are activated by water. They're pretty darn awesome. You can also spread the color around to any places that you might have missed. It does, however, get a bit diluted when you're moving it around, so be mindful of that. Keep checking the camera now because I'm afraid you guys aren't gonna be able to see or if I'm off frame or something. That There's nothing more embarrassing than doing an entire video and then seeing that you're off frame, oh my gosh. 
I've done that before and I haven't even posted the videos because what would be the point? You wouldn't be able to see anything. <laughs> oh gosh. It's one of those days, guys. One of those days. Okay. So we're going to do that with the periwinkle blue and then I always wipe it on my paint paper to blot that off. And now I want to dry this because we're going to add another color on here. So I want to dry this really, really well. Sorry about that, guys. Somebody was at my door and it was a UPS man delivering my package. So for those of you who don't know, my other part-time gig besides being an artist and being a bookkeeper part-time is I'm a Sensi consultant. And if you don't know what Scentsy is, it's the most amazing wax and wax warmers and cleansers, uh, cleaners and pet products. It's just amazing. <sighs> I might do an unboxing for you on my channel to show you what all of that is about. But uh, I won't go into that here today, but oh, I love when I get my deliveries from Scentsy. All right, so now we're going to add this says just purple, but it looks fuchsia to me. So we're going to add a little bit of fuchsia in some spots just to kind of pick up some of the other colors. Like I said, I just want various layers. Some of it's probably going to be covered up when I add the other elements on there. But you will still be able to see them peek through, so that's okay. The whole idea really behind the layering process is really just to honestly get your creative juices flowing. Whenever I'm sitting here layering, I love how the colors all blend together and it's very meditative for me. The process of doing these layerings through the with the Caran Dash and the with the Neo Color 2s and the um collage elements is very, very cathartic. It's very, very relaxing for me. And I love just seeing how the colors just all blend together. They're just so darn beautiful. Now we're going to add one more color. And this is cobalt blue. And I love how these colors blend with the purple and the periwinkle blue. I'm going to call them by their proper names, even though to me this looks teal. Um, yeah, that just looks teal to me, but that's okay. It's cobalt blue. That's what they're calling it. So that's what I'll call it. <laughs> um, but I love how these colors blend together. They go so well with one another. And when they accidentally combine with each other, they make the most beautiful combination of colors. I mean, if you were to do orange and blue, for example, you're going to get a very muddy color. It's going to be kind of almost like a brown. And that, to me, is not going to look nice unless that's what you're going for. If you're going for that kind of muddy color, then please, by all means, you know, continue on. But if that's not what you want, then you need to make sure that you're looking at the colors that are going to blend well together, and orange and blue is not one of them. So I'm going to dry this real quick. All right, that's pretty doggone dry. Okay, so these cards are about self-love. So what I want to do is I don't think I'm going to include this one. I want to put some I am statements on here. So I think what I will do is I will trim this one in half. And let's see what this looks like. Maybe flip it over. Let's see. So you pull these elements out and you think they're going to be awesome, but then when you add them on, they feel a little big. I like the heart. 
And I also think I don't want, see now those colors don't seem to fit well. So I'm gonna do something totally different. See, this is what happens when you start creating. You start getting different ideas. <laughs> it happens, it happens. Can't help it. Okay, so we'll put this back and let's choose something else. This is my little box of tricks here. Now, I want something that's gonna match the cards that I made. That's kind of cute, but it's a little big. Let's see what else. Could do it that way. Oh, that might look cute. I like that. Let's see what else I can find that is similar. Nope. This is what I love about being creative. I can just dig through my little box of tricks and I can see what all I have in there and see what I can make work. This is a little tag. That would look really cute. Maybe punch a hole, do a little grommet. Ooh, I could do that on both of these. Put a ribbon through it and then put my I am statement. And then I think I will do that. All right, we are going to do that. Okay, so now I need my punch. And I have these little flower grommets. Oops, I dropped one. I have to always make sure that I pick these little things up off the floor because of my cats. They may or may not choke on it, but I don't want to take any chances. That's a cute one. That's kind of a, a teal color. I see another teal color. Do I want to use that or do I want to use... Ooh, look at that one. How pretty. So pretty. Okay. Okay. So now, this one already has a hole in it, so I don't need to do that. But here, I want to move this kind of up to the top, if you can see here. And I think I want to try to go as close to the top as I can. And you basically just take your crocodile. Let's look at the hole size, because I want to make sure that I do the proper hole size. So your crocodile punch, there's a really big, if you can see that, there's a really big hole punch here and then a smaller one here. And I think for this one, I want to use the small one. There's also a hole, I always do this backwards and then I realize, because I just learned the proper way to use this, I kid you not, I've had this thing two years and I just learned how to use it properly the other day. Um, there's a hole in the top here and it shows you where you're punching. So you can actually punch correctly every single time. Ta-da, there you go. Then you take your little, oops, you know what? I realize now I should have used the bigger side. So that's okay, we're gonna redo it. We're just gonna go right over that same spot. There we go. Now we got the bigger hole and we wanna put our little, little grommet right through that hole. Okay, did I punch with the wrong hole punch both times? Yep, sure did. Okay, let's try this again, guys. Good gracious. Wow, okay. There's also a little, a little adjustment here that you can slide back so that you can get it up farther on your on your paper. So you just peek down in that little hole, you can see exactly where you're punching, and there we go, we got the right size now. Put your little grommet right in there, like that. And then you can see this little guy. This little guy, um, it changes based on the size. Hopefully you can see that. It changes based on the size of the grommet that you're putting in. And so what I want to do is I want to pick, I think I want that one. Okay. So then what you do is you just put it, 
put your grommet back on if it falls off. Um, and it goes this way. You got to have this part here at the top. Okay. Make sure it goes right into the hole and then squeeze it down firmly and it puts it right on there for you. Look at that. How cute is that? And it won't move or anything. So we got that one. And then I am going to have to punch this one because the hole is too small for the grommet. So we're going to again go in with the big side, the large side. And we're going to line up our hole with our little viewing window. Punch that hole in there. Take our grommet, put it in there like this. Take our this side of it, make sure that it's in there firmly and squeeze tight. And there you go. Perfect, every single time. Okay, now what I wanna do is I've got my little stamps here. Um, I'm thinking for a second. Oops, I gotta get my ink. Hold on, it's behind the camera. Good grief. Nope, it's over here. Okay. Let's get rid of the Neo Color 2s. They're kind of in my way. Alrighty. So, I'm filming this on my iPhone, and the good news is when you're doing that, you don't get interrupted with phone calls, so <laughs> I have it set so that it takes all of my phone calls and puts them on Do Not Disturb when I'm recording. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do, I really kind of like the way that this is going this way, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my I am statement here, and I'm going to write it's going to say I am, and then I'm going to write what the self-love card is supposed to say. So I should just leave it out. And I'm going to go ahead and do both of them. Beautiful. Just want to put these back so that I don't lose them. Okay. I hate when it does that, like when it, I hate when it has that ink right there on the side. So I always try to come in and erase it if I can. Sometimes it will let me and sometimes it won't. And it doesn't look today like it's going to without messing it up. Ah, okay. So I don't want to mess that up. Let me see what I have here. This is almost the same color and by coloring on that uh, or erasing on that it it almost erased the paper to a white color so I'm just gonna go in with this marker that is almost the same color and kind of give it some shading around it and see if I can't fix it I hate when it stamps like that. It irritates me when I have that. It looks dirty to me. And I don't want this to look dirty for the person that I'm making it for. Thank goodness this is an archival ink. And it's not water soluble. And it's not going to, to smear when I cover over this. So... Okay, 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a black pen because I do not want this to be looking messed up. And I'm just going to go over my letters a little bit with a chisel shaped black pen. And that's the one to me that works the best with this particular stamp. Okay, so we're going to leave that there. Oh, and I want to, I'm going to go ahead and just do dot, dot, dot. I am dot, dot, dot. And I'm going to do the same with this one. And since this one is on white, I have a white Sharpie. I haven't used it in a while, so I have to shake it up. It's a Sharpie white uh, paint pen. And all I want to do is just dab it on to kind of try to camouflage where I kind of over stamped a little bit. Once that dries, it should blend in just fine. And if it doesn't, that's quite all right as well because we can, well, it's fine, it's fine. I'll be fine. You're almost treating it like white out. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now, I think I want to write this with pencil first. That way, I won't mess it up. So the first one I want to write is I am... Oh. You really can't see that, so never mind. I'll just go straight in with the chisel sharpie. I am worthy. And the second one, I am, oh, I forgot to do the dot, dot, dot here. I am, um, I am loved. Beautiful. Now, there's one other small little detail that's, I don't want to call it my signature detail, but I guess kind of it is. It's something I've started doing on all of my artist trading cards is I take a little bit of white gesso and where's my little pen paint brush and I would do this with my fingers but I can't right now because I have to I have to do something directly after this so but what I like to do is I like to just go around the edges and just very gently add with gesso, just some white around the border, just to kind of give it a little bit of interest. Oh, what the hay, I'm already getting it all over me. It just does the coolest border and I just love the way that it looks and gives it such a lovely little element makes it not look so ordinary okay heck with it I'm just gonna do it with my fingers it's so much faster <laughs> I have to do something directly after this, but I suppose I could wash my hands. <laughs> I act like it's such a big thing to have to wash my hands. There we go. That actually looks a lot better. 
lots, lots better. Okay. Actually, <laughs> now that I've done that, I'm just going to go around the other one. Oh, it just looks so much better. Uh, I was just trying to save myself the hassle of, you know, having to go in and scrub up. Okay. There you go. So I'm going to dry these. Okay. Now, the last thing you want to do is get a pen, just a regular fine point pen, and make sure they're dry, but then you want to turn it over on the back and you want to write your name. And you want to write the group that you're in. So in this case, mine is willowing.org and it is the December 2019 swap. And we're going to call this self love because that was the title of the swap. And you want to make sure you do that on both um, on all your cards, however many you're making. That way, when they look back, then they know exactly what the card came from. December 2000, whoops, 2019 swap. Self-love. And there you have it. These are my two artist trading cards. Aren't they so cute? I love them. I had so much fun making these with you guys today. If you decide to give this a try, if you haven't made artist trading cards before and you want to give this a try, um, leave me a comment down in the comments down below. And please subscribe. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers so that I can keep bringing more and more content to you guys. And once I get to a thousand subscribers, I'm going to do a little giveaway. So please subscribe and share this with your friends. And I can't wait to see you in the next video. Have an awesome day. Bye.